Welcome to uh, the, uh, the Federation Aeronautique International's Ballooning Commission Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Probably my favorite uh, night of the year um, in that we get to recognize some of the heroes uh, in this sport and the people that have done so much for it. And uh, it's a, a well-deserved recognition and it's the highest honor that the FAI can bestow upon anybody uh, from the Ballooning Commission. So. Uh, the inductees are very uh, worthy candidates this year and excited to have them. Unfortunately, one of them couldn't make it here uh, because of uh, uh, travel restrictions, so that was unfortunate. But since this is an FAI um, event, if we could have everyone stand uh, while we play the FAI National Anthem. And we get it live this year, this is really nice. <laughs> So we uh, um, are here to uh, induct into the, uh, the Hall of Fame, but being that this is also a uh, FAI Ballooning Commission event, we also have one other uh, special um, award that we would like to present, uh, which is the FAI Air Sports Medal. Um, you have to be nominated for it, and, and a lot of times the Air Sports Medals are um, issued to people that may not be recognized otherwise. They, they weren't the record setter, they weren't the winner of the race. Uh, but they're the people that are behind the scenes and do so much for our sport that we wouldn't be able to do it without them. And so uh, we do have um, a special um, air sports medal that we would like to present and, and we are fortunate to have here in Albuquerque, uh, Mark Sullivan, who is the uh, president of the FAI Ballooning Commission. So he'll come up and uh, present this, uh, this award uh, before we get into the Hall of Fame. So, Mark. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you a lot. And uh, it's my honor as the president of the FAI Ballooning Commission to uh, say a few really special words about the museum here in Albuquerque. It, it is really nice that the museum hosts this prestigious thing for us at the FAI. I mean, to, to bring in all of our best flyers and if you've seen the, the uh, display in there, it's outstanding. And I'd just like to thank the museum and uh, all the uh, uh, board of directors of the museum and the foundation. And uh, a little shout out to my good friend, uh, Willie Eimers. They really, really tried hard to get here. They, they just couldn't make it. And his wife, Claudia, was coming. And Sebastian, Benny. Uh, Fritzy was coming, so we're going to miss you guys. We'll see you next year. So, I, I say that to him because we're live streaming this to him in Germany right now. So, um, they're listening to all this. It, the award we're going to give out, uh, Troy pretty well told you what it's all about, but um, a lot of work goes into doing this Hall of Fame. And from behind the scenes, you never know it. And somebody's really been special to us the last 
Gosh, I think I've been doing this five years now, and I'd like to bring her up here. Um, Dr. Marilee Mason. 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 Get it right. I got to get this right. She pretty well ran this show for a lot of years, and she, I know she spent a lot of her own money on doing this, and she just really did a nice job. And so this is like a really special award. Can I pin this on you, Marilyn? Yeah. Okay. Be careful with that. That's 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 the medal. Okay, Troy, come on up here. Let's, let's get up here and take a picture. And this is the award. It's a really nice award. Thank you, Marilyn. Well, thank you. Say a word. Two two words. I'm thrilled and honored. That's two words. Uh, and this is quite unlike my first balloon pinning. <laughs> but then it wasn't in front of an audience either. <laughs> pictures there. So uh, thank you, Mary Lee, for all the work that you've done over the years. Uh, it, the museum and everything, uh, we all owe so much to her for what she's done and put together, and, and she's been an integral part of the Hall of Fame for many, many years, so uh, she definitely is deserving of that award. Um, on to the um, Hall of Fame. The first person that we have uh, going in is Wilhelm Eimers. Um, everybody knows him as Willie. That's uh, it's kind of like Willie Nelson of uh, ballooning. It's just, it's Willie. There's one name, and you know who you're talking about when you say Willie. Um, this gentleman is what I consider to be a living legend in ballooning. He has flown 28 Gordon Bennett's, um, nine, I think, Gordon, uh, America's Challenges. Um, he's won the, the uh, Gordon Bennett uh, four times and placed second nine times. I mean, it's an outstanding track record. And if you add all those long distance races together, he's actually flown a balloon all the way around the world in these events. Um, he's, he's over 26,000 miles in long distance races, uh, so he's actually gone all the way around the world in a balloon uh, with his achievements. Um, besides the racing, he's also set records. And what's really amazing is, um, having done records and races, usually those are mutually exclusive. Those are things that you don't do at the same time because the conditions usually don't prevail to be able to do a record. For a record, you're looking for the absolute perfect conditions. You're looking for the, the, the day that it's going to be just absolutely ideal to go out and set this record. And that's sometimes we'll wait for weeks for those type of conditions. Willie set a record in 1995 during the Gordon Bennett. He took off in the event out of Switzerland and he stayed aloft for 92 hours in an AA-7 gas balloon. That record still stands today. And there have been numerous Gordon Bennett's and America's Challenges since then. There's also been um, many record attempts on distance in that size balloon. And that his record still stands today is a remarkable achievement that he did that during an event. And um, I think that's one of his greatest achievements was that he was able to stay aloft that long in that little balloon. To give you an idea um, of how long that is, I want you to think about it for a few days. Think of you're just launching tonight off, off this Fiesta field. Tuesday about lunchtime, think you're landing. And so picture yourself in that basket for the next uh, four days. And that's, uh, that's how long he was up there with his co-pilot. So amazing record, still stands today, probably will stand for many years to come. But besides that, he's got over 1,400 gas balloon flights, which in itself is remarkable as well. That's something that very few people will ever achieve. Um, and he's done it by sharing it with so many people. Um, he's instructed over 150 gas balloon pilots. That's more than anyone in history for sure. 
and he's done it in a way that he wants to share his knowledge. So he's won many races. He's done a great job with uh, his, his, self, his flying himself, but he wants to share that knowledge with everyone. And he's got the most beautiful um, balloon launch site over in Gladbeck, Germany. If anyone is interested in gas ballooning, that's where I always tell everyone to go. That's where you want to go fly. You've got to go fly with Willie because he's the guy for sure. He's, um, he's deserving of this award, and it's so, so sad that he couldn't be here um, because of uh, COVID and the restrictions and visas and things like that. But we were able to uh, get a video um, that his family shared with us um, to uh, show a little bit of his achievements and stuff. I don't know if the screen's big enough for everybody to be able to see it, um, but if not, we, we have it and we can continue to run it even after the, uh, uh, the meeting as well, or the, the ceremony. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, show this video at this time. Good evening, everybody. I'm sorry. My English is not the best. My daughter speaks perfect English. She will take over. <laughs> dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of ballooning, first of all, I'm very sad not to be in Albuquerque today. My heartfelt thanks go to the CIA who decided that I should be given this great honor. Ballooning is my life. Only my family comes first. Many thanks also to all of my friends who always trusted me to bring them back to the ground safe and sound. The pictures have shown that I'm also getting older. The only advantage is that I've become more careful. I wish you all a good, interesting and safe balloon fiesta this year. Be sure that I will be there next year for the 50s Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque in 2022. Best regards and thank you for the honor of induction 
into the FAI Ballooning Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Best for you. So, Willie, I know you're watching us on uh, live streaming, and uh, everyone here is uh, sending their best wishes to you and wishing you were here. Um, it's a great honor, and uh, look forward to seeing you here next year. Um, I mean, on my bucket list is to fly in a balloon with uh, Willie Imer someday. <laughs> um, our next um, inductee is, uh, as the Hall of Fame, we select two, two persons annually. Uh, one uh, living and one posthumous. Um, we want to recognize the people that are no longer with us and have done amazing contributions. Um, and I, uh, I kind of said to my wife, just kind of jokingly, I said, you know, none of the inductees, none of the posthumous inductees ever are, are there. They never show up. <laughs> um, however, that's not true in this case. Um, if you look at this balloon museum and everything that's in it, um, our next inductee is with us because he was one of the early engineers and people that designed the things that we fly today and came up with many patents and ideas on ballooning and marketing and he was there for the first uh, hot air balloon flight that Ed Yost made uh, way back in 1960 and he was ballooning even before that. Um, he was a tremendous engineer, a brilliant man and a balloon pilot himself and uh, just to tell you more about that is his son who's been piloting now balloons for 46 years, uh, Greg Winker, who has an outstanding uh, resume himself. And so, Greg, if you'd come up and say a few words about your father. This is a big award. This really is big. Um, I think Dad was always destined to have a career in ballooning. And if not in ballooning, in aviation in some capacity. Um, he grew up on a, a farm outside of Randall, Minnesota. And the geography buffs in the audience will recognize that Randall, Minnesota is right next to Little Falls. The history buffs in the audience will know Little Falls is the, ho is the hometown of Charles Lindbergh. In 1927, the year before Dad was born, Charles Lindbergh made his famous solo transatlantic flight, and it essentially kicked off the golden age of aviation in the United States. And when it came time for Dad to go to the University of Minnesota, he enrolled in the aeronautical engineering program. I mean, he was inspired by the events of his, his youth. Um, and what was surprising at least it was surprising to me when I, when I learned this, there was a lot of balloon experience in the faculty in the um, aeronautical engineering department. For example, um, Ralph Upton, 1913 Gordon Bennett champion, was teaching at the University of Minnesota. And more significantly, Jean Picard, husband of Jeanette Picard, father of Don Picard, was also on the faculty. So, spending downtime with these guys talking about their balloon experiences, I'm pretty sure inspired Dad to apply for the intern position in the balloon department at General Mills. General Mills, the cereal company? Yeah, back in the 50s, they had a balloon division. Strange. When Dad graduated from the University of Minnesota, he went into the Air Force and was assigned to the balloon research group out in Boston. Uh, he did that for a couple of years, and when he uh, uh, left the Air Force, uh, Raven Industries had just been formed in Sioux Falls, and he became the first employee of that company. One of his early projects was working with Ed Yost to develop the modern hot air balloon. Uh, Ed was the idea guy. When Ed had an idea, he turned to Dad and said, you're the engineer, you figure out how to get, get it to do this. So the two of them led the team that developed the first Hot air, modern hot air balloon. And a year or two later when they did that first flight in Bruni, Nebraska, that was the moment Dad said, 
I'm going to become a pilot. I, I can't contain myself. I got to do this. So he did what everybody at the time did. He wrote a letter to the FAA and said, I want to be a balloon pilot. Send me a license. <laughs> Which, at the time, that's what you did. All you had to do was ask for the piece of paper and they would give it to you. Um, his training was equally as rigorous. On an, <laughs> on an early training flight with Don Picard, um, Don turned the controls over to him, and I wrote this down to make sure I said it right. Don said, you pull that thingy over there to go up, and you pull the rope over here to come down. Things have changed. <laughs> Dad was never a flashy pilot. He didn't need to you know, try and set world records or compete in you know, national championships or anything like that. He just liked to fly balloons. He was, he was a quiet man, and he enjoyed working in the background. And I think if you asked him, you know, what was your biggest accomplishment in your career, he probably would have said, you know, early on working with the FAA, to develop airworthiness standards for balloons and pilot certification standards. Basically, in total, the framework for modern hot air ballooning. And you know, that might not sound like the greatest accomplishment in a, in a career of accomplishments, but if you think about it, how many people can say that their personal efforts have had an impact on virtually every hot air balloon ever built and every pilot ever certified. Hall of Fame, thank you for this honor. So, so we also, um, every Hall of Fame uh, inductee um, has received a medal that they ha actually can uh, wear there uh, or give to the family here. So uh, you have to uh, earn this by getting into the Hall of Fame um, and we're very proud to be able to present this to uh, to the Winker family on behalf of Jim and we uh, have one for Willie as well that we'll get to him as, as soon as possible if not next year for sure. So <laughs> Great. there you go. Thank you so much. Thank that's, you. That's tremendous. <laughs> So like I said, this is probably my favorite night of the year. Um, recognize the people that have come before and the things that they've done. And I think what it does is it also inspires the newer generation to go out and do great things with balloons, uh, to push the limits and to see what, what is possible because I don't believe we've ever reached a limit. There's always something more to do. And uh, without these guys, we wouldn't be where we are today. Um, it's a wonderful sport, and we need to continue that with uh, the younger generation as well. So hopefully this inspires many of them to come along as well. The, uh, the facility that you're in here is the, uh, the Albuquerque Anderson Abruzzo International Balloon Museum. Lots of titles, but Albuquerque's in it, uh, not just because we're in the city of Albuquerque, but because it's actually a city of Albuquerque building. Um, the city of Albuquerque is very generous in... Uh, supporting the ballooning activities. The Balloon Fiesta Park is also a city park. Um, so a lot is put into the city, uh, from the city uh, into ballooning. Uh, this is such a big part of our culture and who we are. And the City Cultural Services Department actually operates this building. And we're very uh, lucky to have the Head of Cultural Services with us here this evening, uh, Dr. Shell Sanchez. And she will uh, give a final toast uh, for our, uh, our inductees here. And uh, you have some uh, champagne on the uh, tables. And afterwards, uh, you're welcome to come back into the museum. Like I said, come back up and see the video of Willie's if you'd like as well. So, Thank you. Yes, it is. Um, it's an honor to represent the city um, this evening. And I'm always amazed. This is my third um, time at one of these ceremonies. And, you know, growing up with balloons, I'm always amazed and impressed at the individuals who are really part of um, the history and legacy of ballooning far beyond Fiesta, but so thank you. So let's, let's raise a toast, let's take a moment. This is a time-honored tradition and uh, it's a very special moment for a lot of people that are here um, for individuals. So first, let's raise our glasses 
to the dedication, adventure, endurance, and accomplishments of William Imers. We honor your lasting impact on the sport and spirit of ballooning. To Willie. Willie. Right. All right. And next, let's raise our glasses again. I know you guys are all good at it because you're balloonists. <laughs> <laughs> to the innovation, dedication, engineering, and long-term energy of Jim Winker, we honor your lasting legacy to the spirit and the sport of ballooning. Cheers. Nice, and as they say, third time's a charm. So, let's also raise our glasses, because I can still see they're full. Let's raise our glasses to all the inductees, um, former inductees, to the history that they've built, to the innovations that they've brought, to the community that they've built. So to those inductees past, and also to the present, or to the future inductees, we're probably going to be flying in the skies of Albuquerque in the next week. Happy Fiesta. Cheers. So we have uh, snacks over here, it looks like. Some, uh, so, so we have um, our sponsor, Vara, uh, is uh, graciously provided some, uh, some drinks and food over here. Please help yourselves to all that. Um, Hang out as long as you'd like. Uh, visiting with uh, Greg can probably tell you a lot more stories about his dad. You got a lot of balloonists in here that uh, I know would uh, like to visit one another, uh, friends from around the world here. Help yourselves to all that. Thank you so much for coming to this and uh, have a safe fiesta.